Greetings, fellow rimmers and purveyors of anime war crimes. It is me, your boy, whatever the fuck I'm called, with Robo Daddy, back from his psychic. Well, I mean, I was obviously back yesterday from his psychic storage, minus a wife, but of course we are rebuilding another one. Thank you, comment section, for fixing my grievous errors where I was trying to install feet into these animals, and I was like, oh, why is it not working? Forgetting that, of course, to actually be able to install a foot module into a leg when you turn it into a foot module, not just a foot. So I'm working on that straight away. So hopefully we should be able to carry on with the Void Tick upgrade program. Since yesterday, I basically let uh, about four days in-game tick over. Obviously nothing has happened because it's way basically well, we got three hours. Uh, basically, I wanted to tackle all of that research. I remember a couple of episodes ago, I went through the whole tree and I queued up all the research that was important that we kind of missed. And then yesterday I undid that because we wanted to get the Glitternet stuff done first. Well, now I've put all that research back on now that we dealt with the Glitternet stuff. So that is all back on the agenda. We've got 19 more things to do. Right, <laughs> right now, we're researching that fine advanced computer ass ready for when Robo Mummy 2.0 is built. I should have really researched that before we started building it, huh? Anyway, we've got 19 research kit. It really won't take him too long at all. I've also redone the research lab, so it's the most optimal research lab we could have with the furniture that we have at this stage of the game. We've got the scientist cabinets. We've got the 20 research counters. Some are connected to it. Somebody literally just say like this one, for example, doesn't actually connect up, but it's there just to fill in the gaps, quite literally. So right now we're looking at a bonus 989% research speed factor. Of course, not including Robo Daddy's own buffs like his research pal and his neuro calculator and his bra whatever. So those are also going to contribute as well. Now we've also finished building this structure over here, the one that I mirrored from the bottom, so that we can... <laughs> Speaking of advanced computer ass, so we can build... The Glitternet. Uh, we, we can build like a Glitternet server, and more importantly, we can build a, a genetics lab over here. Now, well, you might remember, we did start tithing animals yesterday as well. As a result, given that four days have passed, we've since had another animal tithe from two of our animal settlements. Remember, we also set one up in the jungle at the end of yesterday as well. So we've, we've picked up, as you can see, a fucking shitload of animals. I was going to start to slaughter them all, and I thought I'd better show you guys actually what we picked up first. So let me just go to the animals tab here. Um, you know what, let's just zoom in. Let's just zoom in. Now, I have also installed a mod that's been quite popular recently on the workshop. I wanted to at least show it off for an episode. For me personally, although it is very visually impressive, it doesn't really fit reward in my opinion, but I can understand why people like it. A lot of effort's gone to it. The artistic skill is obviously massive that's gone into this. It's the HC Animal Reskins mod. It's on the front page of the workshop right now. You can't miss it. But I wanted to at least show it off for an episode because it looks incredible, especially, and, and to be honest, the only time you probably really want to use this is if you're also using uh, Zoom mods, like, for example, we're using Camera Plus right now to be able to really see them. Basically, it takes all the animals in remote and it really scales them up so they've got much, much higher detail than they have previously. In my opinion, it's a little weird. Like, it's a little bit too much detail, particularly because normally remote, obviously, you can only zoom into what, like, there. So it's, it's a lot of detail to ram into the game. The scythers also look... They look quite cool, but they don't really look very mechanoid, in my opinion. But, hey, it's, it's an incredible mod. I at least wanted to show it off for an episode. Farmer Wojtek has never looked better. Except it does look a bit weird when you've got this garbage-looking cactus mine. To be honest, it doesn't look bad. Like, the cactus mine doesn't look bad. It just doesn't fit with everything else we've got going on there. That is a uh, pikeman as well, by the way. They've obviously reskinned those quite, quite significantly. Anyway. We've got a shitload of animals. We've got to decide what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of here. Um, that's just way too much. The worst part is, of course, Robo Daddy is incapable of violent. So we've got to put up with these for a while until we get another person actually capable of butchering the damn things. How else could we do it? We could starve them to death, but that seems like, uh, that seems fucked up. War crimes against people, not animals. Oh god, look at the boomalope. Oh, it's like a dirty, pustule-filled deer. That's vile. I like it, but it, but it is pretty vile. So we'll probably hang on to, out of all the animals here, um... We'll obviously keep our named animals, right? So White Claw, Voitech, uh, the Horn, the Mycoi Colossus. This is a fucking fantastic name. It was coming yesterday saying rename it to Big Fungus, which is just that's that's premium shit tier meme right there. Big Fungus, and then we'll turn him in into obviously the uh, the big battle platform that we've got planned for him. Now, one thing that did take my fancy, ignore the Diplodocus, was the Tar Guzzler. We did actually get a Tar Guzzler, and those look like they might have arms. Do they have arms? Please have arms. Uh, leg. No, 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 no. I don't care about leg. I want arms. Uh, do you have shoulders, perhaps? Fucking really? They've got these big fuck off tentacles and we can't... Oh, they count as legs. Oh, god damn. All I want is one animal with an arm. Whatever. Eventually we'll get one, right? We've just gotta... We've just gotta keep working. What about the goose? We could keep the goose and turn that into war crimes, goose. Uh... <laughs> Advanced <laughs> bionic legs. Just this goose running at you at 20 miles an hour on big human legs is a fucking horrifying sight. I'm in. 
I've never been more in in my life. We'll just give it the regular bionic legs. There you are, little goose. So we've got two hours before the next raid. One thing I wanted to make sure I got done before today's episode, obviously, because otherwise it would just be a complete fucking slog for you guys to watch, is rebuilding all of the external walls. Now, some of it I've still missed. Some of it I've had to manually rebuild here as well. Because um, obviously, if, if we get holes like in the center, they'll generally build the top part of the wall before building the middle. We end up with shit like this going on. So I've, I've tried to get it as, as accurate as possible. I, I missed like two things there from where I was redoing the research and obviously building some of the other stuff but it's it's a couple of minor holes in the wall it shouldn't matter too much right let's recall the robots for a start let's bring all those guys back home now i'm hoping we should be able to manage this so we're not going to use the um we're not going to use the gas corridor this time mainly because with one person i mean trying to catch them is going to be a bit pointless oh we also had a prison break and i forgot to lock away the chaperone mines so they quite literally just bombed the shit out of the entire prison. So I've had to rebuild that. We also lost a few prisoners. But right now, without Robo Mummy, we can't do anything with the prisoners, unfortunately. We've got one guy incapable of violence. That doesn't allow for many war crimes. So we need to wait till the other robots built. Or ideally, the ultimate situation will be, of course, rescuing Robo Mummy and bringing her back. Next wave is a tremendous raid. Oh, God. Okay. Triam Kinship again. Another big tribal raid. I think what we'll do before they start unclustering is we'll go ahead and, uh... We'll go ahead and let these mortars do some damage. Oh, God. That is going to be fucking devastating. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's fine. That was pretty good. I, I will admit, that feels way more satisfying than, than like, an anti-grain warhead. Just the ability to do something like that. Well, granted, we could also use Megaman against it, but I'll save Megaman for the Tremendous Raid instead. Bear in mind, it's, it goes on, what, like a five-day cooldown or some shit. So I'm missing five canisters, really. We haven't gotten a fuel for it. Now, I have turned off the antimatter alloy fusion machines. I've also turned off the composite refiners. Two of them, anyway, because we've got a ridiculous amount of composite that's just sitting in the stockpile. Like, we can't get through it fast enough. So to be honest, turning all of those off just as kind of a temporary thing probably wouldn't hurt. That way we can use it to fuel our, our weaponry instead. Okay, let's unleash the mechanoids. Go on. Those new scythers do look very cool, don't get me wrong. It's just they feel a bit strange that like some of them are green, some of them are orange. They feel like... They don't they don't really fit like a, a single faction aesthetic, do they? It feels a bit odd. Wow. Those auto mortars. The, the crazy part about the auto mortars is not the fact that obviously they're an automatic mortar. It's the fact that they are deadly accurate. They are so, so much more accurate than your regular Rimworld Mortar. We were actually kind of having a conversation about this in, in Discord. The regular Rimworld Mortar is kind of bad. Because not only are they hideously inaccurate, but you've also got to manually, of course, man it. So people like Robert Daddy and Capable of Violent can't do anything with it. You've got to supply the ammo. There's a cooldown time. There's an aiming acquisition time. And then there's the accuracy issues. But these things have none of that to worry about. Oh, fuck. Please, for the love of God, watch the walls. Fucking hell. Okay, the scythe is in there. Oh! Well, thankfully, it looks as if this raid is over before it's even began because of all those friggin', uh... Oh, what's the decay rate doing? What are you doing? Consuming beer? What? <laughs> Did the tribal raiders bring beer and then drop the beer and now the decay rate is after the beer? He is. Oh my god, it's... You, you are Voitex Kindred Spirit. We've got the decay rate sitting around... Just, just down in pint after pint, and then Voitek over in the corner with his cigarillos. That's very strange. I feel like we're probably just going to lose it, though. I was just walking straight past. That is a man on a mission right there. Oh, my God. Um, It's downed. We'll just rescue it after the raid is over. Fucking thing. I thought it's limited to... It is limited to the animal roaming area. Yeah, so there's nothing else, unfortunately, I could do about that. I mean, we'd, we'd limited it the best we can. It's either that or we close the doors, and then obviously the kill box won't work. Fucking shitty Drake. I think the auto mortars are too strong. I'm gonna say it. Like, they haven't even got to our uh, kill box yet, and they're already dead. Unbelievable. The auto mortars dealt with that entire raid. Granted, they're quite expensive to keep running. You know, without this machinery, you would never be able to keep this ship running unless you had a pretty significant colony in base game Rimworld, right? You would have to have a massive colony to be able to run this and just randomly researches uh, genome sequencing followed swiftly by made uniform. Robert Daddy's got his priorities in order there. So the next amount of antimatter just came out. Right, let's make sure that we're refueling Megamin before we refuel anything else here. Four out of eight. You know, what? I'm going to force him to just finish that one off. That way, depending on how powerful this raid is, you never know. We might get a drop pod raid, which would be pretty devastating still at this stage. But we haven't really put down any internal defenses um, besides the occasional turret here and there. 
So this I want to keep in case you get a drop pod raid, because obviously you can see the shadows where the drop pod are going to fall. If we call it in the second they spawn in, we should be able to get the laser beam focusing in before they've even got out of their drop pods. They just open the door and they're immediately incinerated. What I want to do is I want to research the slightly higher level of the robotics so that we can build tier four robots, but maybe just a couple of each one, and then remove the robots that we've got. So rather than having, say, four tier three hauling bots we could have just one tier four hauling bot that way it should help out with any sort of long-term frame rate issues that we're going to start picking up we've got a fairly sizable base we've got a lot of shit as well we've got this many robots we've got, i mean we've got an absurd amount of robots we've got an absurd amount of animals and that's only going to get worse until we get a character capable of violent so i've got to try and make sure that things don't fall over when we're so close to unlocking some pretty crazy shit there he is linen cloth cat it's a shame we haven't got anything else to build that out of hang on we do have something else to build that out of we could build a cosmic weave couch. Or as we call it in the UK, a sofa. Um, okay, let me take a look at that. Furniture? Can we build it out of cosmic weave? Uh, we can. That is the height of decadence. It actually is quite a nice color as well. A hundred. Uh, and what's the beauty bonus on that? Fifteen? Really? Although just one piece of, of furniture will cost 7,500. Wow. 2.4 comfort as well. Times 300 because it's cosmic weave. Fuck me. Um... How much is one Cosmic Weave? That's five Cosmic Alloy. Oh, sorry. Five Cosmic Alloy turns into ten Cosmic Weave. And how much was it per section again? Uh, a hundred. Good God. Uh, <laughs> that's madness. That's absolutely madness. So five cos Cosmic Alloy make ten Cosmic Weave. So we're going to need, what, like 20 Cosmic Alloy per sofa section? 25 per sofa section or something like that? And then that's 25 times 7 gold. I, I can't do numbers like that off the top of my head. That's just a lot. That's a lot of investment for something that's fucking completely irrelevant. I also tried to make the kitchen a little bit more efficient as well. So I've, I've reinstalled the uh, cooled storage unit closer to the cooker. And then I've increased the cooker's power to allow it to increase the range. So you can increase the power by 1500 points there, 1500 watts. To be able to give it a much larger range, that allows it to fully engulf the, the storage unit there. So whenever it can cook, it can it can access the the cooler and obviously grab the stuff out of it i would assume because it counts as just being on the floor right you can see it right there so i assume that works as as intended it's a shame we can't install that close enough to to be able to grab the stacks out of it but obviously there's the one block around the edge and then including its own size there it's only going to be able to pick up around the edge that's a shame so why are we not butchering humans oh it's not the fact that we're not butchering humans it's the fact that the we're not butchering animals so right now, the, the input is clogged up with animals. So what we need to do is make an output IO port just for human corpses. That's... Okay, right, got it. Says a lot about a man when he can block an antimatter toilet. That's frightening. It's an antimatter smart toilet, too. Uh, feel like we better... It's, it's all that human meat. He lives on a diet of just pure human meat. Absolutely zero fiber involved here. Good God. Okay. Uh, where are we even draining that to? Sorry. I've, oh, just a crappy wooden septic tank in the, in the field. I feel like in some ways, you know, we've got particle accelerators, but we're still essentially using latrines. This is a bit strange. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the best message I've ever seen. ERBOT73 has failed in a minor way. We're operating on Goose installed bionic leg. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's just too funny. That is just too funny. Um, install another bionic leg in the right leg, if you please, ER bot. Unbelievable. My poor goose. I'm specifically keeping the camera over here for a minute. Uh, firstly, we unlocked room atomics, which is obviously really good, because it's another form of power. I want to build all the different types of power, rather than just going for it, because I feel like the antimatter generators are probably going to be unrivaled, aren't they? But just having those around everywhere, I feel like, is kind of missing out on some of the other mods. Taxes have arrived. Now, this, of course, is our animal tithe. We have tithed. Two Diplodocus, one side Triceratops, one Lima, one Thrumbo, one Gallimimus, one Fish and Mouse, one Animus Vox, one Yak, two Cactipines, one Dunalisk, and one Raptor Shrimp. Right, good. Um, where? Triceratops. We've got the Thrumbo. Look at this fucking building. <laughs> I mean, the Thrumbo looks really good with the, uh... The Thrumbo looks incredible, doesn't it? With the, uh, With the adjustments, with, with the graphics adjustments there. Pretty cool. The Dunalisk is frightening. Do you have a bionic? Have you, got, have you got arms? Do spiders have arms? Sp does, do spiders have arms? What a strange question. Of course they don't have fucking arms, you idiot. Uh, what about... What else have we picked up here? There was something There was something there that I was almost certain would have an arm. Raptor shrimp. I'm pretty sure a raptor shrimp must have arms, right? 
Uh, right eye, left eye, right eye, brain, stomach, left eye, brain, body, left lung. Really? What does it have? I mean, besides big fuck off blades. Damn it. Oh, God, we still haven't tied an animal with arms. We have tied just about every other fucking animal in existence. Look at this shit. We've done a series where we've had a zoo before, and somehow this is more of a zoo. What a mess. Fucking good God. Wow, how's how's my goose doing, by the way? Uh, he's got one by on it like, oh, he's going to have to hop around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant good shit there you go it's manufacturing at long last that's pretty good wow i mean this is just just trying to work in his lab there's a giant six foot spider and then a fucking diplodocus next to a tyranid good work gonna finally bring robo mummy home and she's gonna have a lot of fucking questions <laughs> what a mess okay well i guess we'll wait how long until our android is printed for god's sake because so many animals we need to we need to uh retire Need six goods to one medicine. Oh, I hasn't even started yet. We were making her out of fermented rossing mounds. Human meat times 436 and 240 plastil. Oh, God. Don't like the idea of my wife having a fermented rotting mound. Excuse me, brother. Do you have any glitz to one medicine? They do. Hey, we can grow our wife again. What else have you guys got? Um, We've got 114 raw thermal wool. I assume that's from where we've been uh, obviously butchering animals. Have we got anything we don't want? That might be a better suggestion. What what don't we want that we have? Oh, we've got a load of tech prints just in storage because, of course, we can't see them. I, I'll do like I've done with the um with the limbs, and I'll throw... Whoa. Hello. Psychic reader, psychic harmonizer. Because a mind reading ability, negotiation plus 50%. That's pretty fucking huge. Okay. Um, What I was going to say is I'll throw all the um, tech prints on the floor like we have with the barnet so we can more easily see what we've got here. We've got plasma swords. That would be pretty fun. Um, a prestige cataphract armor. Oh, wow. Cosmic power armor. 61,000. I mean, I've got to try and buy that, haven't I? We'll buy that and we'll buy some prestige cataphract armor. Although that's not going to be as good as the void armor. This is definitely, though. This is. There's no doubt this is going to be better. Okay, what can we sell you that you might be interested in? Um, God, this is going to take a lot of bass room. Bear with me on this one. We can just afford it. So I've had to give them all the high grade steel. I've had to give them quite literally 7,500 jade and another 3,100 antimatter composite. But we now have one of the best helmets I've ever seen in, in any RimWorld mod. I was going to say in the game, but, but I've ever seen in any... I mean, it's just insane. 172% sharp blunt in heat. We get a 38 degree insulation against cold and a 27 degree insulation against heat. It's a market value of 40,000. Holy shit. I mean, there's going to be nothing that can shoot this guy in the head now. That I think even a, a straight-up shot to the brain from the from the dinosaurs. Hello? <laughs> what am I looking at? Uh, Rough-plated monitor. Hello? You're fun. Varanus Bratisius. Sounds like an Oblivion NPC. Um... Chemfuel Myrmidon. Brilliant. Replacement for the ubiquitous boomalope. Consume both meat and vegetables and ferment them into powerful chemfuel mixture. Okay. Um, we've got a Frostmite. We've got a Great Devourer. We've got another fucking wild pod. We've got a Metalivore. Oh, God. What is that? Fill a specific niche eating metals. The writhing tentacles. Oh, here we go. The writhing tentacles in the animal's mouth secrete an or organic uh -uh, substance. I was almost a Freudian slip there. Move on. Move on. Move on. We've got a lot of animals. Welcome. Ravager 2. I appreciate that. Um, some of these guys look like they would make some interesting interesting weapons, wouldn't they? The Metal Vol, obviously the Ravagers, the Great Devourers. Fuck. Welcome to the zoo. This is just pure madness. We have descended into chaos here, people. This, this is hell on earth. I don't know how the game hasn't ground to a fucking halt. We've got antimatter facilities, particle accelerators, dinosaurs, devourers, just all sorts of crazy... The, the fucking dinosaurs are in my cocaine room. Get out of there. That lemur's in my cocaine. <laughs> is that a baboon? Baboon have arm? Uh, so what I've done is I've also very quickly enabled a mod called Compact Hediths that should allow us to take a look and, and kind of see what the hell's going on with animals a little bit better. It gives a much better overview of uh, kind of what's going on with with body parts, especially when they get massively complicated. It might take a little get used to here. Baboons have arms. I don't care what you're telling me. <gasps> you 
We can install minigun hands and assault rifle shoulders into this fucking baboon. Start with the shoulders and work down. Because if we do a so shoulder surgery, it might remove the hands. D does that make sense? Let's fucking do it. Oh, this is big. This is big. Uh, so, so, hang on, but we've also got arm charge rifles. Can we do shoulder assault rifles, arm charge rifles, and then hand miniguns? <laughs> this boy's gonna look like War Machine. Oh, this is so good. Don't turn around. That'll be against YouTube policy. Holy shit, this is, uh, this is a game changer. We've got a, a dirty, vicious raccoon animal. Raccoon animal? Baboon animal. Apparently it's a mandrill. What the fuck's a mandrill? Hang on. Uh, man, mandrill. Man, mandrill. It's not a baboon. What's a man, oh, mandrill versus baboon? Uh, the mandrill has a more ape-like structure with a muscular and compact build, shorter, thicker limbs with two C's, nice, that are longer and collapse together. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a little baboon. <laughs> oh God. It's just the absurdity of this. It's just fucking hit me. We've got a parade of animals, dinosaurs, bears, fungal monsters walking past. And now we're, we're pulling off a baboon's hands and replacing them with miniguns. It's just, this is, this has gotten weird very fast. And all it took was some animal tithing. Surely Robo Daddy will succeed. Surely he will succeed here. If anybody will. I mean, he's got almost 20 medical. Come on. We've done it. Left arm module slot. Ah. Is that going to work? Is that going to work now if I install that? Uh, well, let's see. If it still is included in this bill, it will most likely work. Looking for the PCB CR right arm. What do we install that? We install that into his left arm. Yeah, unfortunately... You can't have that. We need an arm module. I don't believe we can turn these these weapons into module slots. Uh, let me just double check, though. Um, right, so it's these ones down here. I'll type in module just to, just, just to double check. Um, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. We give an Arcotech arm with a hand module. No, even that wouldn't work. So we're just going to have to give him the hand module. Uh, we're just going to have to replace his, his hands then by the looks of it. Okay, that's a shame, but it means we can only get two weapons on an arm, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just double check here. So as long as we can replace his hand, uh, left hand, left hand, left hand. Oh, we can't. Oh, no. Ah, shit. Okay, so if we replace the shoulder, we can't have either. Okay, that's a bit annoying. Um, so we've got, we could still give him an Arcotech arm and an Arcotech hand. Because, of course, again, these, these are module slots, unfortunately. What happens if we... Okay, so in the other arm, let's do some experimentation here. So in the right arm, let's install the, the charge rifle. Then we'll see if that gives him the ability to, 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 to add a hand onto that. Or I imagine it will just open up a hand module slot instead, unfortunately. Well, I've got the robots churning out some other monkey-based bionics. Sorry, I should say ape-based bionics for our, our little guy who needs a name as well. Mandrill needs a name other than Mandrill, which sounds, again, much like my OnlyFans page. What we're going to do while we wait for that is set up the Glutoneb stuff. So we do have now access to the advanced Glutonet processor, which was really what I was waiting on. There's no point really starting Glutonet stuff with the basic, only to then, you know, do a bit of research the next day and have it all become redundant, right? So let's put this somewhere in this server room that makes sense. We kind of want to keep it as close to the wall as possible because we are going to have to run cables through... I mean, across the entire base. It's going to be pretty ridiculous. We're, going to, we're basically just rewiring the entire fucking thing. Um, let's put it in the middle of this room. Let's put it parallel to those doors. I think that's probably not a terrible idea. Uh, and then, Glutonet processors. I don't quite know how many we're going to want to start off with. I'm just going to build four of them. I'm just going to build four of them. So, the Glutonet processors offer a varying amount of petaflops. And, and, and petaflops basically are... Man, I'm trying to think of some good metaphor for this. The amount of water you've got access to in your in your, in your hygiene mod, for example. And then you expend that at these stations, which all have varying effects. Uh, some allow you to hook up basically more machines to your network. So as, it, as, as a default, I believe you can only hook up two machines to another workstation. So say, for example, the, the advanced research integrator. We'd only be able to put two of those down right now. With, uh, I, be I believe it's the concurrency processor we can add another machine to that the overhead processor allows you to use more petaflops simultaneously or something like that like i said i've only used it a little bit but it's it's very very straightforward nowhere near as complex as i imagined the complexity really comes from the uh cybernet components where you are essentially connecting people up to uh, to an internet based on uh, uh bionics powering bionics essentially so we could have that monkey on the internet 
And then there's also the animal control mod, so we could have an internet-controlled, minigun-wielding monkey. I'm, w I'm winning myself over the more I talk. It's funny, n normally... Hang on, there's a joke here, someone give me a second. Uh, normally, the, the internet-controlled, weapon-wielding monkeys are just the ones on Twitter. Am I right? <clears throat> anyway. Right, how, how much more has that got to do? So we need 10 components for that one. It's actually prohibitively expensive to set this up in the early game. It's 48 components per Glutinet processor. And I've just ordered up four of those fucking things. That's 200 components almost. Good God. Uh, how many are we churn out? 25 at a time. I feel like we probably want to... Oh, no, no. We've got 84 in storage. Okay, we are... Oh, we're making 100 ago. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then it unpauses at, what, 25? So we could potentially have a maximum of 125 in storage at any one point. Fine, that's okay. I could manually unpause that and just have it make another 100 preemptively because we know we're going to spend 100. Let's also see if this robot trader has one of the robots that I ended up wanting to build. What have you got for me? Automatic AI assembler. Now, there was a comment on yesterday's episode that did say there's only one action for avenging avenging Robo Mummy's kidnapping. That is by sending an army of robots in to, to bail her out. Now, obviously, we have to wait for the... Oh, I was going to say we have to wait for the quest to get her. But we don't get quests anymore, do we? Because the colony technically ended when Robo Daddy went into stasis to train his psychic powers. If the, I might see if there's a way to kickstart that up again. Maybe I'll, I'll add one of the wonder events so it thinks that the colony has been refounded or something like that. Um, but... We would have to wait for the quest, because as we found out in previous series, even if someone joins another faction, then we turn up to that faction base, they're not going to be there. That's, that's not quite how the system works. We need to wait for them to actually reach out to us and, and, uh, and basically demand a rescue before we can bust them out. We could make a load of AI and put them in storage, put them in the bio tanks, and then unleash them when we need them. I'd be all right with that. Bear in mind, what the automatic AI assembler is one of the items at the start of the game that I restricted us from building in the scenario. So that might work. Let's give that a go. So we've applied three out of the ten tech prints required for Beyond Our Understanding. So before long, we are going to be able to... I mean, three out of ten. My God, really? After this much time? <laughs> we've got to make this series try and last uh, effectively... Twice as long as it has already. Minimum. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I could now make a conscious effort every episode to call in exotic goods traders to try and buy those wherever available. Because that's the only way you can get that research, obviously. Um, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should call in our our ally... Well, our settlements to bring in exotic goods traders in the hopes that that might allow us to expedite it a little bit. We'll also have to make sure we always have something like 30,000 silver in storage at all times. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. This will be the... Please don't sit on his head. Oh, fuck. The, not the tough skin gland, you idiot. Oh, I was trying to install armor on the mandrill, but the robot fucked it up. I might have to get Robo Daddy to do the, the surgeries because I don't trust him. I don't trust those robots to to make sure this... What? To make sure that this mandrill is well suited. I feel like they're just going to fuck it up too much. So we've got two minigun hand. He's not accustomed to this one, and this one is newly installed. We go for two Arcotech legs, an Arcotech brain, an advanced medical liver, and a healing enhancer in the torso. That's just the, 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 the surface. That we, We're barely even scratching what this monkey is going to be capable of. Let's go and get down all of these, because we are going to need every single one of these machines eventually. So we might as well go ahead and just install them now. And then for the research integrators, as far as I recall, three is the maximum. So we'll do one, two, three like that. This room's going to get a little bit crowded. Each one of those at their maximum efficiency, I think, have 50% research speed bonuses. So we're looking at 150% bonus on top of the 900% we already have. It's going to be... Well, I suppose bonus is only 890%. Oh, no. Um, but it is going to be pretty significant here. We, we, we're going to break that 1,000% boundary today. 16 hours before our tremendous raid, I'm going to toggle auto-target on the antimatter railgun. Is everything everything ready and online? It is. We've got the, the, the thunder cannons both online. We have the scythers. I actually forgot to lock the door this time on the mechanoids. So our chaperone mines and our scythers and our pipemen are just kind of wandering around. So they'll immediately engage the target. I don't know how many scythers we've got. Five, apparently. That's quite significant. Oh, one's downed, though, bearing in mind. Um, we've got one pipeman and one scyther down. When we start on what the heck, which will be done after we set up the glutinet stuff, these guys are going to come in super handy because it means we can operate on them and get them back up on their feet with all the other bonuses as well. It's a shame we can't capture one of those big mechanoids, like one of the goliaths. 
Something like that would be really worth using all of these things that we've accrued over many, many episodes. Seems a waste to use it on a Scythe, you know? One hour before we see what exactly a tremendous raid entails at this stage of the game. Oh, is the goose being operated on now? Brilliant. Okay. Uh, where's the monkey? Because we might want to... We might want to use it in combat here, depending on how ridiculous this gets. Oh, our pipe men are... Some of them are outside the walls. Let's pull back the robots. The second it's zero... Well, that, when it gets to zero, a couple of, couple of minutes in here, we'll go ahead and recall all the bots. And now we'll see what we're up against. Just to give them time to get home here. Okay, here it comes. Division H. They have not drop potted in. But I can't help but notice they've brought some very interesting shit with them here. That man doesn't have a body. There's a man without a body there. Uh, we've got a, a, a mammoth with a shield. We've got a crazy looking centipede. Look at the technology here. Holy shit. Um, I mean, your, your electric knuckles aren't really going to do much there, friend. Holy shit. I think we should just let them attack as if, as if usual. As if nothing's happened. And then we'll see what exactly they're doing here. Melee attack in the precision turret. So they are going into the kill box. I think sending, letting them attack through the kill box is the safest method. The only issue is we've got to watch out for chaperone mine on chaperone mine violence, which is going to destroy these walls. It's going to annihilate these walls. Oh! Uh! They didn't even kill one another. <laughs> so they've only got one volley of explosives. Interesting. Chaperone mines seem like a pretty good hard counter to other chaperone mines then. Wow. Oh, please watch the fucking walls. Because if these guys get through the walls, we're so fucked. Where are they going then? Are they going to go through the... Sweet Jesus. Are they going to go through the kill box via this way? Or are they going to go th straight through the front door? I assume through the front door, seeing as this is obviously a lot more effort. That's fine. That's fine. We want these guys to die. Bear in mind, these are the guys that drop the hyper components. So by killing these guys off, we're opening up future technology to ourselves as well. So I we these ones are, are definitely definitely on the chopping block. Look at the scythers go. They're quite cool. Okay, let's see what happens here then. Let's go slightly south. I think our scythe is going to get absolutely, absolutely bodied. My god. I think they even did a did a pinch of damage there. So let's get Megamin kind of prepared. Because I'm if if they start getting past like this point in the kill box, we're gonna have to call in the strike. Let's see how we do. Oh no, they have dropped a smoke pop already, which is gonna cause us some issues. They can shoot at us, but of course we can't shoot at them. Uh why are you not firing? Oh, you're set to hold fire. Now you can go, Bot Wild. Yes! Kill! Yes! Oh, that did nothing. Oh, that was a bit tragic. Okay. Go on. Slightly faster. Now, this might work for them. This smoke pop strategy across the kill box. Whereas if the one at the front now has a smoke pop out, that'll clear away. They might be able to clear our way through the entire box. So we've got to be careful here. And that's actually what's going down. Fuck. Oh, shit. Okay. Good shot there. Well done. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. There we go. There we go. And they are going to fight to the last man. Don't forget. Wow, they got pretty far, but they were still absolutely bodied again. Unbelievable. We are playing on Merciless, are we not? We are. <laughs> we can't get much higher in difficulty at this stage, team. Um, I can obviously increase the damage that would be done between raids. And it might be necessary to do that. Oh, sorry, the amount of people that are going to turn up between raids. I think we're kind of at that stage now where that might be fully relevant. Wow. Jesus. I think definitely a lot of it comes from the fact that our... Oh, no, our auto cannons. A lot of it comes from the fact that the that the walls are so impossible for the enemy to breach. They can't do what they did before. Now, don't get me wrong. We got very lucky in that Division H has no rocket weaponry. We've seen what rocket weaponry can do to us. And that was before we were playing on Merciless. And that was before we had some of these other... Uh, some of the other bonuses to raiders, like the fact that they won't obviously retreat when half their troops are killed before they got the extra points. So if we get a raid from maybe the Outlander Union, I think the pirates, genuinely of all the factions, I think the pirates might end up doing the most damage because of their rockets. That's what we need to watch out for. That's when this thing is going to come in handy, and that's when we will need to unpause the auto mortars. So two of our stations are done. Obviously, where well, the robot's been asleep, we haven't finished the other ones quite yet. So we've got 76 petaflops, and we've got 7.5 being consumed right now. Uh, max integrates per building two, so we still need to wait for the other integrate to come online so that we can install three. Got one point, I mean, we've got a 15% bonus there to processing power. That's quite good. And then you can see all the devices on the network as well. I assume that those devices will show, um, bionics when we get up to that stage where we have networked bionics. Well, what a day.
What an episode. What a, what a day for Robo Daddy, especially. Glutinet is online. Again, a little bit more work, and that'll be finished in, in no time and, and set up and providing the power that we need there. Is it is it working right now? Uh, Advanced Research Integrate. Okay, so those two are oh, those two are working, like I said. This one isn't because we haven't got that third one. So you can see that they're both affecting that workstation, giving it 55% apiece. We are now up to 1,000. Sorry? Oh my god, do they come in after that? Wait, the facilities come in after that. So we're up to 1,618 research speed. Wow. <laughs> so this should take no time at all to get through some of this. I say that, but look at how long it's taken him just to get through this one. That's still going to take days. But again, with one guy, that's exactly what we need. We've got the Glutinet stuff dealt with. We've got a fucking zoo. We strapped some miniguns. We, we chopped off a baboon's hands and replaced it with miniguns. This couldn't be any better. Hopefully soon. How long till Robo Wife is done? 16%. So it might not be tomorrow, but it might be the day after where we get the ultimate Robo Wife. Bear in mind, the only upgrade we didn't get for her was the research bonus. Everything else, oh, for fuck's sake. Everything else, this one has, which is a massive upgrade compared to the last one. So I'm very excited to see what she's got in store for us. By then, we should have some better weapons research and armor research too. So stay tuned for that if you are interested in the Robo Waifu of your dreams. Thank you all for watching. This has been a, it's been a very strange episode. I've enjoyed it quite a lot. There's nothing nothing more satisfying than replacing a monkey's limbs with with weaponry. Thank you to Michael Mullen, Ben Hofflin, Jonah Waters, Crow Skull, Nikki Sticks. My name isn't Dio. Distorted Triangle, Justin Rule, Scan, Siltworm, Sweet Sea, Bacon Kitten, Tom Terror 18, Rage Dragon, Taj, Kamar Ishmael, Darth Hawk, Pelvis Presley, Scared Blue Brain, everyone else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon, of course, for making the channel possible for yet another month. We're currently stuck on my Patreon lists. Not sure what's causing it. Uh, I'm just going to double check that in a second. See if I can get that updated before Elder Kings. Which will confuse things massively, I know. But you will get a shout out tomorrow. If you obviously get a shout out on Elder Kings later. And I'll see if I can get that set up for tomorrow. If not, I'll do it manually for the next day. Thank you as well to... Cogsell, Cass, Alex Bogard, William H, Night Rouge, Grey, Silent Sentinel, Arotha, Justin Plock, Pantherbell, Donald, I'm Sagatair, Yoran de Vries, Ton Oster, Tentacle Beast, Loves Trees, Shardul, Gaz, Vesemus Max, and Dramir as well. For allowing that baboon suffering to happen. You should be ashamed.